Okay, so we're going to edit a couple of JPEGs quick here in the new Photo Lab 8 trial version here. <clears throat> okay, on close. So when you first bring a folder in, it's in the photo library arena here. And when you want to edit, you click up here on customize. So <clears throat> these are some JPEGs I shot. Did a quick edit on them. Didn't really brighten them up or anything. And I just saved them. So we're going to go over here to customize. And we'll just pick an image or two here. Let's say we want to edit this hummingbird picture. <laughs> so in PhotoLab, it makes it very easy to do a quick adjustment, edit, export, and it's, it's real nice. So you have your tabs over here on the top right. So we'll just take this image for now, and I'll show you how I would quickly edit this in PhotoLab and get it exported. So we can zoom in here, okay, and it tells you a percentage right up here. There's 100%. Bird's nice and focused. Everything's good to go. They also have this new loop tool here that you can just go over parts of the image from 100 to 1600%. <laughs> That's pretty cool. That's in, in DXO8. But as you can see, this, this, you know, bird is pretty much, he's good to go. So we're going to shut that down. So what I'm going to do here is just a quick edit. First tab. We're going to go to smart lighting here. I want to bring it out about medium. Okay. Selective tones. I usually don't touch them for now on a quick edit. We're just going to go on a clear view plus. And it usually starts at intensity of 50, which we're going to back down as you'll see. Okay. Even right here. I'm going to bring this down about 35. Okay, 34, 35. And then what you can do here is you can compare side by side. So this is what we started with, a darker image. This is what we have. It's a little lightened up. Nothing here is blown out. Okay. Bring this up a little more. And again, this is just how I do these edits quick. So that's on tab one. I might bring my exposure up just a little bit. That's about good right there. I might want to bring really the tone curve alone for now. So I'm going to go over to the second tab. And this is where you can do color or black and white rendering from DX Audio generic profiles in there. You can do your luck reading. You can do your style toning. And then down here you can bring up your saturation, vibrancy, reds, yellows, greens, cyans, blues. I'm going to leave everything alone on this image. Then OK. This is nice. Even if you have a JPEG, you can still use the denoise technology here. So you would just slide this on under high quality. If it was a raw file, then you can use the prime, deep prime, deep prime XD. You can do lens corrections here. You can do a little retouch. You can do unchart mask, stuff like that. On this image, I really don't have to really get crazy with that. I mean, without even any on sharp mask or some more sharpening, this thing is is good to go. And then on your fourth tab over, if you had something with a horizon, you can use a horizon tool. Okay, you can do your cropping, you can do your distortion. And then under the FX tab, that's where you can put a watermark, an image or a text watermark in your in your image. Um, so this image here, I think I'm going to brighten it up just a little bit more on exposure. Bring this up to maybe 37 to 40. We're starting to blow out that bottle a little bit. And there we go. And then, like I said, if you wanted to go over here, maybe you want to bring the greens up a little bit. Let's bring the channel mix here. Let's bring your greens up a little bit to maybe... Bring it down to like a 25. Bring the cayenne's up. A little bit more blues in there. You got to watch with the blue. You'll see the beak. See the beak on? The beak in the jar is starting to go with the blues. So let's bring this back down here. Okay. And that's what channel makes her off. That's what channel makes her off. We just slightly brighten it up a little bit. 
So now, say we're done with this image, and we have a couple other images here that we would like to do with the same pattern. You can right-click on this, and you can create a new preset from your settings. And let's just go down to Test 44, save it there, and save it. So now you have a preset called Test 44. You can apply it to other images if you wish to. So we're done with this image here. We just want to go ahead and export it to disk. Okay, export is JPEG, quality 100. Pick your custom folder. I'm going to put it in my photography folder. I'm going to put a suffix as bird1. Actually, let's create a new folder in photography called um, test22. Okay, so select folder is now photography test22. Resolution 72. Let's name this hbird44. That's the suffix for it. IC profile, then you can include XF keywords, GPS coordinates, anything like that. Then you just click on export. You will see the little time thing down here on the image showing it's gearing it up for the export. And now it's spinning. And well, that image is now exported. So let's go to photography. Test 2022. And we'll open this image and there's our final image okay and there is 100 percent so as you see a little bit of denoising color adjustment stuff like that very simple to do in the excel photo lab very quick and effective now say as an example we wanted to add that preset to multiple images so you click on one image, hold down your shift, click on that last image. Okay, apply a preset. It's probably not going to look nice, but I'm going to show you. Test 44. Okay, and as you see, these four highlighted images down here now have that treatment on it. Okay, they actually don't look too bad. So those images now have that test 44 treatment. So I can take them, hold down shift, export to disk. We're going to put them right in the same folder, export. And as you'll see, it's working on one, two, three, four images at a time. It's working on the first one, second one, third one, and fourth one. Okay, then you go back to test 22, do a refresh, and here's your images. Got image 1, image 2, image 3, image 4. Okay, they're all good to go. So that's how I use Photolab. Okay, I, I use it very quickly and efficiently. I really like the smooth process. Um, I like how you can create a preset very quickly and, and control A controls, you know, highlight as many images as you want in the same lighting and dump that preset on there quickly and export them. So I find for my photography, Photo Lab is the quickest, most effective for the way I shoot. And um, also when you bring up Photo Lab with a bunch of new images, if you change lenses or whatever, it will download a module for that camera and for that lens to do the corrections automatically. So, I mean, that's that's how I use Photolab. And um, we'll do one more image here quickly. Let's pick something uh, that has a different lighting scenario. I'm trying to get a hummingbird here. <laughs> see here. There's the hummingbird on a flower. What else did we get that day? A bunny. A little bunny picture. So this bunny picture came out pretty good actually. Let's see if we can do anything here. I really wouldn't adjust the I really want to adjust the exposure. I would do like a uniform medium lighting on it. Okay. 
smart lighting on this one. Uh, I don't want to bust it with the clear view. That's way too much. Bring that background a little bit darker. That's too hot for me here. I think about 13 is as far as I would push the clear view here. Little new tool here. Yeah, I think on 13 is about as far as I'm going to push that. I'm not going to play with the tone curve here, the color picker. Let's go over here. And I will show you here. Color, black and white rendering. You can actually click this and go to black and white right here. And it has neutral, vivid, faded, balanced, strong, natural. So it does have some nice generic black and whites in here. And if you go over to color, um, it's got natural, vibrant, vivid, okay, portrait one, portrait two, portrait three. And actually, the XL vivid looks pretty nice on this image here. Okay, so you can always use those. The grading I'm not going to use. And then I'm going to go over to here. We're going to also do our denoising. Even though, again, it's a JPEG, we could still do the high quality. Again, if it was a RAW, we can do the Prime, D Prime XD, all that stuff here. Lens softness correction, you can use that. Chronic abbreviation, lateral, purple fringing. You know, these are things you can always turn on. Unsharp mask, it doesn't need it. But it automatically will do a little bit on short mass. That's up to you. Again, we don't need to worry about horizon. I'm not going to crop the image down. I could crop it a little bit here. Let's see here. Let's take and do a little bit of crop the bunny right there. Okay. And I think that image is pretty much good. I'm going to show you basically how to just do a watermark. So we're going to go to instant watermarking here. I'm going to click image. And I already have a couple saved here. So I already have one saved that's already sit here to be the lower. Let's put it right in the center of the image. And then you could pick your scale if you want to do a watermark like that. Okay, so that's just this tab FX tabs for your watermarking. You could also do text. You can set your bottom margin, how high you want to move that. Blending mode, you can do multiply, screen, overlay. Okay. So I'm just saying if that's if that's what you want to do, you want to do a watermark, that's what this tab is for. Okay. So we're done with this image here. Same thing. Export the disk. We'll name this Gary Rabbit. And we'll click on export. And you will see it's working down here. Now it's processing. That image is a check mark. It is now done. So let's go ahead and you can see rabbit. Open up the rabbit image and there we are. It turned out beautiful. And there's your 100%. So. Again, the Exo Photo Lab for me is quick, efficient, and easy. You're not renting software. <laughs> it's a one-time payment. And um, it's a software I, I use all the time for all my photo editing.